Hi friends, this is Kyle Stedman. Today I want to talk about effects in Audacity. And by effects, I mean all these things you can do that will make your audio sound different. Now I have this page open on the Audacity manual which gives you all the information, much more than I'm about to tell you. So definitely go there if you want more info on the things I'm talking about. Now to have something to play around with, I downloaded this sound called Hip Hop Piano from Freesound. If you don't know freesound.org, it's awesome. It's a great place to get your stuff. Since I downloaded it in Chrome, it shows up in this little thing down here. So I should just be able to drag it into my Audacity window, which is kind of hiding behind there. And if I go over now, I see that the thing I just dragged in there shows up. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, look up importing audio into Audacity. Let's play this and hear what it sounds like. I can hit play or I can just hit the space bar. You can almost hear that the beat is about to come, right? Well, that's the 11 seconds that I want to play with today in the video. And the things I want to look at are under this effect menu. So if I have audio and I want to do something to it, that's always the first place I look. I'm not going to go into all of these, just the ones that I find myself using the most often as someone who occasionally makes podcasts, audio essays, that sort of thing. The first three I want to look at are these uh, ones here, change pitch, change speed, change tempo. In some ways, this is kind of like a trilogy of things that work similarly, but not exactly the same. So before I click one of them, I need to highlight what I want to do something with. I need to make sure that my uh, select tool is put down there. Uh, and if I do, then I should be able to highlight things and select things, just like I can select and highlight things in Microsoft Word or any other uh, word editing program. If I have a different one of these tools pushed down, watch what might happen. I might be like, whoa, I wanted to highlight and stuff is going crazy here. Oh no, um, don't worry. Anything you do, you can undo. You can hit control Z like I'm doing there. You can always edit, undo, that sort of thing. Okay, so first I'm gonna make sure the select tool is down and highlight something. Um, I actually wanna highlight the entire piece right now. So I'm just gonna click over in this empty space and that makes the whole thing highlighted kind of confusing right that, that like a white background means highlighted sometimes I get confused about what looks highlighted and what doesn't oh well um, so I'm gonna click that highlight the whole thing and the first one I'm gonna do is change speed now you can imagine what change speed does if you've ever played with tapes right old things where you you actually manually speed something up or speed it down and you know that if something gets faster it sounds higher and if something goes slower it sounds lower right so I can drag this thing and you can see the percentage change here gets higher or lower. So if I want this to be about 30% faster, I can preview and hear what happens. Okay, uh, if I want to make it 30% slower, right? So, so change speed is mimicking the way that we would expect things that you speed up or slow down to work. You know, how you can make a voice into a chipmunk sound. Great. Um, now, if I hit OK, uh, instead of preview, it'll actually do it to that track. And you see it looks a little different here, and it actually looks longer if I browse over here. It's no longer an 11-second piece. It's now a 16-second piece, and that's because the speed is 30% longer, right? If I play it. Okay, so I'm going to undo that with my trusty Control-Z. Now I'm back to... Great. Um, but you remember there were those two other effects there too. There was change pitch and change tempo. And if you uh, click them, they have these really important lines that tell you what they do. Change pitch without changing tempo. So it's, it's almost something you wouldn't be able to do with a physical tape. So again, I'm going to mess with that percentage change thing there. Let's, let's make it 30% uh, higher, but the exact same speed. Listen to this. One, two, three, four. Okay, let's make it slower. Two, three, four, one. Interesting, right? That it it somehow magically keeps the same sort of, of uh, beat, but the, the pitch actually changes. You can see that if you're a musician, you can say, well, I wanted this many half steps up or down. That sort of thing can be really great. So now that you've seen that, you can probably predict what the third one in our trilogy does. Change tempo changes tempo without changing pitch. Again, I have this handy percent change, so let's let's make it faster, but keep it the same uh, same pitch. Definitely faster, right? <laughs> You 
you might also be able to hear a little bit of distortion. You can only mess with this so much before it's audible, before there's little um, audible clicks happening there. But again, those those three all go together. Sweet. Look at you learning. You're doing all kinds of great things. Um, I should be back to my normal one here because I, I just hit cancel. I didn't um, actually make the change happen. Well, let's highlight the whole thing again and see what's next. The next two ways that I sometimes want to affect my sound is with echo and reverb. And I sometimes forget what those mean and what they do. Uh, so the, the way I think of echo is it, it actually literally repeats the sound, like echo, 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 echo. Reverb will more like make it sound like I'm in a bigger room, you know, with like kind of like a, a warm bigness to my voice. A warm bigness? I don't know. Whatever whatever you want to do. Um, but there's a trick to using these that it took me a while to learn with Audacity. So for this, I actually want to um, go to the end of my project a little bit. I'm going to zoom in a bit using the zoom in. Um, do, do you know you can also like hold the control button and like zoom in, zoom out with your with your rolly ball on your mouse? I just, I just love that. But I'm just going to go to this, this last bit here. Um, another interesting thing in Audacity, if you don't know, is if, if I want to play from a certain place, um, I can just click this top bar. So say I just want to hear that last bit. I can click here. So let's say I want to add some echo or some reverb just to that part. So I'm just going to highlight the part that I want. Um, and first I'm going to play with echo. So say I just want to hear some degree of like echoiness in there. Now, it's piano music, so I don't know how much you'll be able to hear it, but let's just hit OK and see what happens. I'll hit the space bar to play it. Okay, there, there was some echoiness there, right? Let, let's hear it one more time. But, you know, I, I think of echo as being something that kind of keeps going, right? So that there's this interesting thing about the echo effect, that the echo effect, even including the, the remaining final echoes, are not going to extend past what you highlighted. So you might be like, oh, well, you want the echo effect to go past that. So I'll highlight this, but then I'll also if, uh, highlight out to here so the echo can kind of tumble into that final part. Let's see if that works. Effect, echo. Well, that's interesting. See, I don't see any new audio in that part. If I play it, it should sound exactly the same. OK. Um, oh, is that still echoey? Yeah, so let me get rid of that. Um, so. So the problem here is that there's no space. I know it kind of looks like there's space there, but right now Audacity is thinking, nope, right when you hit that 11 second whatever point, your audio track is over. So what I need to do is make some empty space for the echo to bump into. So I'm going to go to Generate Silence. And that's what I use when I want to add some actual silent space that's actually part of my project. Um, so for instance, if I do this and I choose zero hours, zero minutes, five seconds, it's kind of a confusing looking thing, right? But this, this means five seconds. I hit OK. Wherever I had clicked, it's going to add five seconds right to that part. Now I can do this wherever. You know, I, could, I can click here and be like, hey, generate five seconds right there as well. I, mean, if I, I can make that happen wherever I clicked last using the select tool. I'm going to undo that though. So now, if I exported this project, my project would now be 16 and something seconds, not just five and something seconds. Uh, I'm sorry, not just 11 and something seconds. So, but, so watch this trick now. If I, if I highlight this, and I highlight the space I want the echoes to tumble into, and now I do echo, watch what happens. You can see the sound now has a place to go. So let's hear that. Uh, it works the same way with voice or with anything else, but the, the main thing is there has to be empty space for the echo to go to if you if you want to do that. So let me undo uh, that echo effect, and the same thing happens with reverb. So if I, if I highlight all the space that I think I might want to reverb into, and I choose reverb, um, you see I have a bunch of kind of scary options here, but I can kind of play with these, right? And be like, oh yeah, give me a really big room size. And I don't honestly know what all these mean. You can go to the manual to look at that. I can preview it if I want. Let's just hit OK and see what happens. And right away we see this just a little bit leaking past, but that little bit is actually important because otherwise it, the, the reverb would kind of sound like it stopped really suddenly if I didn't give it space to grow. So let's hear that. You hear that little little bit there at the end? You know, this is this is almost easier if, if um, I actually speak. So let me let me just try a, a short voice recording. Here I am talking. I'm saying really smart things because I'm in a great video. Oh my goodness. 
Okay, um, I'm going to mute that music, put that little mute button, and now just hear this. Here I am talking, I'm saying really smart things because I'm in a great video, oh my goodness. Okay, great. So if I, if I want it to sound like I'm in, you know, a bigger room, I can affect reverb. Let's hear a possibility of that. I'm saying really smart things because I'm in a great video, oh my goodness. Yeah, that's fun. Uh, what if I make it a smaller room? I don't know, what is wet gain? What is dry gain? I don't know, let's try it. I'm saying really smart things because I'm in a great video. Oh my goodness. Okay, great. So I hit OK. And again, that last little bit of reverb is going to end right there because there's no extra space. So before I do it, I'm going to go in, click there at the end, generate silence, five seconds, highlight the part I want to reverb and the part I want it to go into, effect, reverb, do it. Oh, it's just that teeny, teeny little bit. Oh, well. I'm saying really smart things because I'm in a great video. Oh my goodness. Okay, great. Got it? Okay, you got it. Let me undo some of that. So, um, actually, let me keep that there and I'll mute it and I'll unmute this. So we can play with that voice recording later if we want. Now the final effects that I want to play with are the effects that mess with um, loudness, volume, whatever, whatever word you want to use for how loud things sound. I'm going to start with the easiest ones and maybe get a little, little more complicated as it goes. Oftentimes, if you're dealing with talking or music, you might want to fade in or out. Well, it works the same way. I use a select tool, I highlight whatever I want to fade in, I choose effect, and I choose dun -dun -dun -dun, fade in, and watch it. You see how it fades in now, you can hear it. It stopped because it, it, uh, it only wants to play what I highlight, at, you know, but I could, I could hear how it keeps going. Um, what's interesting and cool and, um, and customizable about the fade tool is that you can make a fade as short or as fast as you want. Like what if you're like, no, I just want like a really, really quick, subtle kind of fade, you know, just like to get in there. Well, then I just highlight that little part, I affect, I fade in. Now, now listen to that. Did you hear that? It's a little, it's just so subtle, Get gets you into it. Uh, uh, I, I could do it the opposite way, right? I could make this like literal entire track one giant fade in. So the speed of my fade depends on how much I highlight. Obviously, fade out works the same way, right? I can pick the end of something. Doesn't really even have to be the end of thing. Something. Decide how slow I want it to be, and it'll fade that entire way. Into the distance. Okay, great. Uh, so that's easy, right? You got it. Fade in, fade out. Okay, just two more really quick ones. Sometimes, uh, especially when I'm talking, especially when I'm recording my voice, I find that I want to make something a little bit louder. So, so the amplify effect, you saw it there, right? Amplify, it lets you select something you want to make louder and make it louder. So you can do it with as much or as little as you want, right? So if I just um, choose this little part here and I'm like, ooh, make that louder. Effect, amplify, um, it's gonna say like, uh, wait, how how much do you want to amplify it? And there'll be this number. Um, I'll tell you more about that number in a second. But watch what happens if I just hit OK. It's just going to make that one little bit louder. Let's see if you hear it. Did you hear it? It was kind of the, the sudden, whoa, this part's really loud. Because in music, that, that can be really weird. So I'm going to go back and let it be as loud as it wants. I could do it with the whole thing, right? If I highlight the whole thing and hit amplify, now you might notice that the number is much smaller here this time. Let, let's hit OK and see what happens. <laughs> Did you even see it? Let me let me undo, redo. Yeah, you, it's it's almost imperceptible. The the reason is that the Amplify tool has a built-in setting to not let let you make your audio sound bad. In other words, to not let you clip. Now what what clipping is is when um, there's actually an example of it down here. Do you remember when when I was talking and you saw how when I was talking really loud at first, like this. My, my bars actually touched the top. That's actually a really bad thing. It means that it's going to sound a little bit distorted. Let's, let's hear that clipping. Here I am talking. I'm, no, that, was, that was pretty subtle, but did you hear this? The sound was a little bit like chalking. Here I am talking. You, you lose a little bit, um, and, and in some situations, that can actually be really, really annoying. It can make uh, a really, it can set you up as an amateur really, really fast. So what Audacity is trying to do is it's not going to let you amplify so much that your stuff gets really, really loud and starts to sound clippy unless you click the little box that says you can. I don't know if you saw it. When I did Effect Amplify, there's this Allow Clipping box. Well, let's, let's say Allow Clipping and go, I don't know, more than I should and hit OK. 
Oh my goodness, this is horrible. Look how bad this is. I'm going to hit play, but <laughs> you might not even want to hear it. Jeez Louise, let's not allow clipping. Undo. So, um, so what the amplify effect does is it looks at whatever you highlighted and it essentially says, how far is it from that to the top, to that to the bottom? How far until it touches, until it clips? And it gives you a number that's their automatic guess of the loudest you can get uh, without clipping. So watch, when I hit OK, you see how it got pretty loud but not touching? That's on purpose. That's Amplify doing what it's supposed to do. Well, I think there's a problem there because um, let me let me do a new a new audio track. Mute this. Start over. Let me let me record something here. What if I'm talking really quiet? You know, like I'm recording something, but everyone else in my house is asleep. But then I start to get really excited. And I'm like, you know what? You really need to do this thing. And then I go back to the quiet part. Have you ever had that? I've, I've had that happen. Well, look at the problem here. If I highlight this whole thing and I do amplify. The, it's set at zero because it knows that in what I highlighted, there's already some clipping there. So it's going to be like, you can't amplify this. Like, look, I hit OK. Oh, well, that's annoying. It didn't, didn't do anything. Um, now, you can get really kind of picky. You could be like, OK, well, let me highlight all the non-clipping parts and let me um, amplify that. Fine. Now I got a number, 433. And you see it upped at some, but this part was a little bit louder. So now it's like, OK, do I do I now do it with... I, you, you can get into this this thing where you start like amplifying every little part and it, it might not even sound good. Let's just try it really quick. What if I'm talking really quiet, you know, like I'm recording something but everyone else in my house is asleep, but then I start to get really excited and I'm like, you know what, you really need to do this thing. I don't know. I think it's pretty pretty bad recording. Uh, let me Let me undo all that, all those little amplifies and I think there's a better way. And I've said this before in a different video, but my favorite effect for this is the compressor effect. Let me let me show you how that works. If I if I highlight the stuff that I want to compress and I go to compressor, essentially this stuff is all all kind of complicated. But the basic idea is that you can make the loud parts quieter and the quiet parts louder. And if you want more information on those settings, you can um, go here and you know read things about the compressor tool. Um, but I'm just going to hit OK and watch what happens. Do you see how visually you can kind of see a little bit of volume leveling happened? And you know that because the quiet parts are a little bigger and the big parts are a little louder. This is actually something you can repeat. I don't know, maybe this is a bad idea as, a, as an amateur who doesn't know what I'm talking about. I'm just going to hit it again. And sometimes that even like makes it a little bit more even. Let me hit play. What if I'm talking really quiet, you know, like I'm recording something but everyone else in my house is asleep. But then I start to get really excited and I'm like, you know what, you really need to do this thing. Okay, that like that was clear, still that was still clearly louder, uh, but it wasn't like as louder as before. The difference wasn't so much. Now, of course, you don't want to do this if you're editing music where the loud and quiet really matters. Like uh, there can be a whole lot of reasons why you don't want to do this. If you ever Google volume wars, I mean, for goodness sake, you learn a loudness war. You you can all learn all sorts of things about about how this has been a problem in audio recording, and yet. When I'm recording my voice, I think it makes it sound a little bit better. That's really all I want to share with you today. There are tons more effects you can do. They're fun and you can play with them. What I would say is just like highlight, go to the effect and see what happens. Wawa, there's a Wawa, what is that gonna do? I have no idea. What if I'm walking really quiet? Crazy, huh? But you know, a lot of those are more ones that I don't find myself using as much. Um, I do love, for instance, the vocal remover, it is super cool to import your favorite MP3s and play with them like that. There are a lot of other ones that are uh, can make your audio sound a lot better. But again, for an amateur who doesn't really know a lot about what he's doing, eh, don't look at me, sorry. A lot of the ones I showed you are good enough. Hope that helps you. See you later. Bye.